Is your trading entry that important when it comes to trading? A common misconception that most beginner traders make is that they need to get the perfect entry when it comes to trading. But what if I told you that a perfect entry is far from necessary to be successful when trading? What if I told you that it might even be a hindrance to your success? In the book Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom, Van Tharp aims to burst the myth about nailing the perfect entry. He argues that a trading system is only 10% entry. H argues that a great trading system is a function of designing a strategy that fits you personally, good risk management, tons of setups, and a good exit strategy in place. This video is my top 5 takeaways from Van Tharp's book, Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom. If you are enjoying this video so far, we would appreciate it if you could like this video and hit the subscribe button. We also have a free day trading guide which you can download via the link in the description below. Takeaway number 1. Design a trading strategy that fits you personally. Trading is personal and not one size fits all. It is okay to look at our people's trading system but that should be your starting point in designing a profitable system. Some questions which will help you craft a trading system that fits you include. 1. How much time can you devote to trading daily? 2. How much money do you have? 3. How much money do you need to make per year from your trading? I will further illustrate this by describing three different characters, each with their unique situation and how it influences their trading system. Meet rookie trader John who is still an undergraduate in his final year. He has been juggling between school and a part-time job to build up a small pool of money to invest. John's small account will not be suited for short-term trading where the commissions charged by the broker will severely eat into the profits that his positions yield. While short-term trading is not suited for him, John can however afford to take a higher risk since he has no financial obligations like a mortgage. Meet our second frictional character Tim who is a partner of a head fund and thus doesn't need to worry about trade commissions since he gets a special rate. He must however ensure that the equity curve of the hedge fund is stable without big drawdowns. Any sharp drawdown could cause his investors to panic and leave the fund. In his case, he needs to adopt a strategy that has a high win rate without significant drawdowns. Our last frictional character is a retiree named Jordan who has plenty of time to trade and also the finances to trade. Because he can devote a lot of time to trading, day trading is perfect for him. Through these examples, you can see that everyone has different needs, and thus it is important to craft a trading strategy that is tailored specifically to you. Takeaway number 2. The notion of R&R &R multiples. One of the most common and deadliest mistakes an aspiring trader can make is to not define his risk when entering a trade. Van Tharp calls it R, the short form of risk. You probably heard about the golden rule of trading which advocates to cut your losses short and let your profits ride. If you do not predefine your risk, you could potentially lose your entire trading account in a single trade. Now when I say predefine, I'm referring to knowing when you are going to exit if you are wrong. All great traders are masters of risk management and they know how much they are risking at any one point in time. If you were to buy euro dollar at 1.5 and place in a stop loss at 1.49, we can say that you're risking 1R. What 1R means depends on the percentage of equity you risk per trade. Now Van Tharp explains that every trade you make can be measured in multiples of R using the earlier example. Let's say you managed to exit euro dollar at 1.52, a gain of 200 pips. That's a 2R trade because your stop loss was 100 pips and you made 200 pips. Van Tharp further illustrates this concept using two bags of marbles. These two bags characterize two different trading systems. Each marble within the bag represents an individual trade and the outcome of the trade is expressed in terms of R. But how do you know which of the two systems is better? Well, if you sum up the value of the marbles for each bag and divide by the number of marbles, you will get the expectancy of the trading system. The expectancy of the trade represents how much in terms of R, that you can expect to earn on average from a trade. In this example, we can see that System X is better than System X in this regard. System X has an expectancy of 0.5 R versus System Y which has 0.3 R. Van Tharp tells us to visualize how the distribution of R multiple looks like so that we can understand what to expect from the system. Takeaway number 3, always have an exit plan. Van Tharp argues that exits are way more important than entries. Just like how you should build your trading strategy to suit your personality, it is important to build your exit strategy so that it matches your personality. This is the only way to ensure that you can stick to your trading strategy over the long term. Could you handle being wrong 10 times in a row? Many profitable systems yield big profits but take frequent small losses. 
This is very typical of a trending strategy where the big money is made when the market trends. But because the market only trends less than 20% of the time, you will be taking frequent losses when the market is range bound. And even though a trending strategy might be profitable in the long run, you could easily have 10 losing trades in a row which might lead you to abandon the strategy. Van Tharp covers three types of exits that you might want to consider. 1. Percentage Exits This is a very common kind of exit where you exit if the price drops a certain percentage. If you read the classic book How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill, he talks about cutting your losses when a stock declines more than 7% from your entry price. You can also use a percentage exit as a trailing stop loss where you adjust the stop loss as the trade moves in your favor. 2. Time Exits If your trade idea is based on a news event or catalyst like an earnings announcement, then using a time exit is logical. You expect a reaction from the market to the news event and if the market doesn't move, then your thesis is wrong and you exit the trade. 3. Volatility Exits When the market makes moves to a level which it shouldn't, it is time to get out. This is useful for cutting losses short and securing profits alike. Now no matter which exit strategy you pick, losses are unavoidable. Rather than avoid it, seek to manage it and keep your losses small. Takeaway number 4, you need opportunities, tons of it. Knowing your expectancy and how much you can make in terms of R per trade is good. But Van Tharp accurately points out that there must be tons of opportunity if you want to make good money. After all, there is no point in having a high R trading system if it only gives one setup a year. This is what Van Tharp calls expect unity. Let's return to the two bags of marbles from takeaway number two. Now, considering what we just discussed, which of these two systems will be more profitable? Let's say that System X has very stringent rules and thus only trades on average once a week. As a result, you can only expect to profit 26 R yearly since the expectancy per trade is 0.5. Now let's say that trading system Y, which has a lower R, trades on average once a day. Thus, you can expect it to generate about 109 R yearly since the expectancy per trade is 0.3. System Y is likely to make more profit in a given year even though it has a lower expectancy per trade. This is because the system offers more trading opportunities. Takeaway number 5, the most important part of a system is position sizing. If you thought that having a trading system with positive expectancy is enough, Here's a reality check for you. Position sizing is the most important part of a system because it has as much impact as expectancy and opportunity. Yet, it is often overlooked. To demonstrate the importance of position sizing, we will return to the bag of marbles that represents System X except that this time, I want to introduce three traders into the example. Tim the risk taker, Rachel the fixed minded and conservatively. Each of them has $5,000 to trade and they all use the same systematic trading strategy. The only difference is how they size their positions. Tim the risk taker is always risking 20% per trade or in other words, $1,000 per trade. He lives by the motto, go big or go home. Rachel the fixed minded wants to keep things simple. She always risks 2% or $100 per trade and does not adjust this as her account balance grows or declines. Conservatively applies the percentage risk model taught by Van Tharp. She always risks 3% of her equity on any given trade. In this case, since she has a capital of $5,000, she risks $150 per trade. Her percentage model is structured in such a way that her position size will increase if she's winning and decrease if she's losing since it's based on her equity. Now assume that I randomly pull out 10 marbles from the bag. Remember that each marble represents the outcome of a trade. The result is as follows, 5 consecutive losses, followed by 4 consecutive winners, and lastly a single loss. To keep things simple, suppose that each win is a 2R multiple or gain and each loss is just a single R loss. Notice that between the three traders who are using the same exact trading strategy, got vastly different results just by applying different position sizing. Tim the risk taker, lost all of his capital by the time the trading system started producing winners. Rachel would have made $200 and conservatively would have made $258. Van Tharp advocates using a percentage system when it comes to position sizing just like Rachel and Lee. But between the two, he prefers Lee's approach because you are only increasing your position size when you're trading well. And when you are doing poorly, you're reducing the damage to your account by decreasing the risk. Earlier on, we talked about the importance of knowing the distribution of R for your trading system. You could run multiple scenarios and construct your position sizing taking into account your risk tolerance and objectives. Suppose you do not want to suffer a drawdown of 
you can pick a position size that is unlikely to hit that threshold. Here's a quick recap of my 5 takeaways. Build a trading system that fits your personality and risk appetite. Always be sure to predefine your risk R and evaluate your trading system in terms of R multiples. Having an exit strategy that maximizes your returns and matches your personality is also important. When deciding between trading systems, consider both expectancy per trade and number of opportunities since a high expectancy system may not necessarily yield the best results if there aren't enough trading opportunities. Lastly, position sizing is the most overlooked aspect of trading but it can make or break your trading system. Remember that traders often take a perfectly good and profitable system and ruin it by not managing risk well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We have many other Forex videos that are created to help you become a better trader. Thanks for watching.